Begin the balancing sequence by selecting the cone or collet that best fits the center hole of the wheel. We will be back cone mounting since this usually provides the best centering. Next, slide the cone onto the spindle, then the wheel. Start the wing nut and then double tap the foot pedal to thread the cup up to the wheel. Now, depress and hold the foot pedal and snug the wing nut. For the first wheel in a set, we suggest you perform centering check to verify accurate mounting. To do this, select Balance and then select Perform Centering Check. Simply follow the on-screen instructions and graphics. Lower the hood to spin the wheel. Position the valve stem at 12 o'clock and then press Enter Valve Stem. Next, loosen and move the wheel and adapter to a different location on the spindle hub. Lower the hood and spin the wheel again. Now, position the valve stem to 12 o'clock again and press Enter Valve Stem. This display indicates an accurate mounting, so this mounting setup should be good for the remaining wheels in the set. Since the balance condition of the wheel is measured during centering check, a check spin is not needed. If the display shows OK and both force indicators are green, the wheel is balanced within acceptable tolerances. You can move on to the next wheel. If not, the display will show balance limits exceeded and one or both force indicators will be red. To make corrections, first enter weight placement dimensions with the data set arms. Position the inner arm so the disc rests at where the weights will be installed on the inside of the rim. Depress the foot pedal once to enter this dimension. Now, locate the outer weight position and depress the foot pedal to enter this dimension. The display will update to show the amount of correction weight required and the location of that weight for both positions if two weights are needed to fix the imbalance. Press the start button and servo stop will automatically position the wheel and trigger the laser locator. Configure the correction weight and attach it centered on the laser line. Now, depress the start button or servo push the wheel to position it for the location of the inner weight if required. Configure and attach the weight. In some cases, Smart Weight will determine that only one weight is required to fix the imbalance. Once weight placement is done, close the hood and check the job. OK at the weight display and green bars at the force indicators illustrate the wheel is balanced. When selecting a mounting cone, it's always desirable to use the size cone that contacts the center bore of the wheel nearest the center of the cone. Always be certain the cone does not bottom out. This will prevent proper contact around the taper of the cone and compromise centering. If the best fit cone sets deep within the center bore, this can reduce the pressure spring's push against the cone and compromise centering. When this occurs, position the spacer washer between the pressure spring and the cone. This will improve centering by increasing the pressure the cone applies to the wheel. When mounting alloy wheels, always use the clamping cup with the protector ring installed. It's a good idea to inspect the condition of the protector ring from time to time. Replace it if it's damaged or contains embedded debris. When mounting certain light truck wheels or wheels with a center hole larger than 3 and 9 16 of an inch, use the best fit cone on the outside of the wheel. With this type of mounting, don't use the clamping cup on the wing nut.
Using an optional flange plate for mounting is advantageous to avoid clamping against the outside surface of the wheel. For example, this is the best mounting method for plastic clad wheels. To mount the wheel, first select the best fitting cone. Then configure the flange plate with the correct pins and set the pins to the correct bolt circle. Mount the wheel as shown. On certain hunter balancers, weight mode is selected automatically. For example, if a clip weight can be used on each side, place the inner data set arm here, the outer arm here, and then depress the foot pedal. You can always refer to the graphics for correct positioning of the arm. As you can see, a clip clip mode has been selected automatically. For a clip tape mode, place the inner arm here at the rim and press the foot pedal. Next, swing the arm down and place it here for the outer tape weight. Again, weight mode is selected automatically. If tape weight is to be used exclusively, swing the inner arm down and position it here on the inside of the rim and depress the foot pedal. Then move it out to here and press the foot pedal again. When balancing in the clip-clip mode, the balancer will automatically stop the wheel to position it with the application location at top dead center. The graphics on the display will confirm this and show you exactly where the correction weight should go. Attach the weight as indicated. If an outer weight is needed, press the start button to locate the outside and install the weight. On balancers equipped with Hunter's hammerhead feature, a laser line will illustrate where the weight or weights should be installed. On this wheel, place the inner weight here and the outer weight here when two weights are required. When balancing in the tape tape mode, the balancer will automatically stop the wheel to position it with the application location at bottom dead center. The graphics on the display will confirm this and show you exactly where the correction weight should go. Attach the weight as indicated. If an outer weight is needed, press the start button to locate the outside and install the weight. For exact lateral positioning of the weight, use the display graphics. Pull the arm out until it overlaps the weight image on the display. Then, rotate it down to the inner rim location to place the weight. This same graphic feature can also be used for the outer weight, if two correction weights are needed. The split weight feature is especially handy when the correction weight needed is very large and or unavailable. Also, when the weight location interferes with a hubcap or trim ring. To enable split weight, select the split weight button. Press it once to split the weight once. The balancer will automatically determine the size and location for each weight. Press a second time to split the weight again. You can continue to split the correction weight until it finally returns to the original single weight correction. To hide the weights behind the spokes of the wheel, use split spoke. To do this, use the inner arm to enter the weight planes first. And then before returning the arm to the home position, split spoke can be initiated. Move the arm out to a center position behind a spoke and depress the foot pedal. Next, 
move the arm to a centered position behind an adjacent spoke and depress the foot pedal. Return the arm to the home position. Next, install the inner weight. After a weight is placed, press the start button to position the wheel for the first outer weight and install. Press the start button again to locate the second outer weight. Install the weight and perform a check spin. In some cases, smart weight may determine that only one weight is required behind a spoke. When this occurs, smart spoke will flash for a few seconds, just below the right weight display digit. For the remaining wheels in the set, select New Spoke Location for New Spoke Orientation. This will keep you from having to re-enter weight plane dimensions for each of the remaining wheels. TPMS information can be recalled two ways. If the balancer is equipped with a barcode scanner, simply scan the vehicle's VIN. Otherwise, scroll down the soft key labels until you see Recall TPMS Info and select. The At a Glance information shows the type sensor used and three images that illustrate the requirements for servicing, the process used, scan tool, and OEM scanner. A red and white stripped border indicates a possible requirement. Scroll down for additional detailed information. The load roller runs parallel to the tire and applies load on the assembly to take road force measurements. It's capable of applying up to 1,250 pounds of force. The amount of force placed on the assembly is dependent upon the tire's diameter and stiffness. The load roller will not overload the tire. The load roller can be enabled or disabled using the control knob. When disabled, only a balance spin will occur. To measure road force, close the hood and let the system do its job. At the end of the measurement cycle, road force readings can be viewed here. If the measurements exceed the limits, force matching should be performed on the assembly. Additional detailed information on this and other road force issues will be covered in a separate video presentation. Remove the calibration weight from the back of the balancer and install it on either side of the hub faceplate. From the wake-up screen, close the hood and press Start. Verify Quick Cal Check and press Start again for the calibration check spin. When complete, the display will show Calibration Ready, indicating the balancer is ready to use. If calibration out is displayed, the unit should be recalibrated. The spindle shaft and hub face should be cleaned at regular intervals. Once clean, the spindle shaft should be lubricated. From the primary balance screen, select Clean Spindle Threads and run the edge of a rag between the threads while the spindle is slowly turning. After cleaning, inspect the shaft for nicks and burrs, then coat it with a light spray-on lubricant. Do not lubricate the hub face. This can cause slipping between the hub face and the wheel. Mounting cones, collets, and other adapters should be kept clean and lubricated. Clean and then inspect the cones for nicks and burrs. Lightly coat the cones and adapters with a spray-on lubricant. For additional wheel balancer training or training on other Hunter products, contact your Hunter representative. To find your local rep, go to our website at www.hunter.com. Thank you.